Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Matt's Videocast. Tonight is a very special guest and a good buddy of mine uh, that I, I share some stories for, for a few years now. Uh, the one and only Craig Ross, who is known as an iconic guitar player and the guitar player for Lenny Kravitz since 35 years. So um, Craig and I are going to talk about what's happening with the Lenny Kravitz camp, what's happening in the in the lockdown um, theory and what are they doing, uh, writings, are they just chilling or whatever, you know, but uh, I think it must be fun. Uh, and Craig is a very special person to me. He was one of the first uh, big artists to trust uh, the, the Mads Guitar Shop. So I hope uh, this interview is going to be interesting for you guys. Feel free to subscribe to our Mads, Mads Guitar Shop TV uh, YouTube channel if you, want to, if you want to check and discover some new episodes of Mads Guitar Session, the acoustic session we're doing, Mads video cast, or just the guitar demos we are doing because we are also in a decent guitar shop. So thank you very much for following us. I hope you guys will have fun watching this interview and next up with Craig now. Okay, everybody, I am beyond pleased to welcome uh, my good friend, Craig Ross. Craig, thank you for being uh, another guest and a very special guest in the in the Bats video cast. Thank you for being here, brother. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. It's uh, my pleasure to be here. Well, I mean, I was, I was uh, speaking with uh, Max that you met at the store as well, and uh, uh, it's... Mm -hmm. It's a long way the, since we, we, we met the first time, actually, because uh, I, I remember I was remembering today buying your, your 345 at Rudy's in New York City. And we met. After, That's right. It was like 2015 or 14. I don't remember exactly, but you came to the show, right? With the guitar. Yeah, exactly. And I, I still have it. And it's it's such a, you know, a pleasure to 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 play it. I, I still don't understand why you you sold it. But <laughs> it's I, I'll tell I, I will tell you why only because I wanted a 355. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have one. And at the time, uh, Chuck Berry was alive. Okay. And BB King was alive. And something in my head said i want to have a 355 while they're still alive these guys so yeah. i i walked into rudy's one day and he had two amazing uh 60s late late 60s yeah so i just said all right well i don't know what can i trade him you know and i had that one in my box i don't know why i did it but so anyways I have my 355. Yeah. And it's great. Yours is great. I, with the Gibson logo on the pig guard and stuff. It's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 69, I, I think. It's really cool. Yeah, it's I, I, I tried it. I think you, you let me try your guitar in Oslo back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah. that one was super cool. I mean, of yeah. course, the black beauty is always there, you know. That's what that's what that's we not are going thinking. anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that's the one we all, you know, uh um, see you with you know on stage and we are, we are all expecting for you to play this one every night so uh, and yeah so, well I, i've had that one. i've had that one forever oh yeah and, and by the way yeah. how did you how did you buy that do you do you remember the story with that one yes there used to be well we we used to buy guitars from the newspaper okay back in the day you would i would always look in the local paper in the back to see if somebody was selling something. I, I used to buy a lot of guitars that way. Okay. And we were rehearsing in New York and I saw this guitar in the classified. Mm -hmm. We call it classified. Anyways, I always wanted it because you know, it's on the cover of uh, the second New York Dolls record. Yeah, right. Uh, Steve Jones played one. I think it's even the same one that's on the New York Dolls. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so I always wanted one. So he had, this guy had two guitars. He had that one, was perfectly mint. Okay. And a 59 three pickup. Okay. Okay, with PAFs and stuff. Yeah, so they both came, okay. but in, in my mind, I wanted the one from the New York dolls so lenny got the other one and all oh, right yeah all right and I, yeah i see, see him playing a ratio of that of that one on stage 
I think from the last tour he was playing. Uh, he has he has a studio. custom shop, but in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, but the, this one is in, is in the studio here. The the three pickup. Wow. So so yeah. Well. But uh, the, but. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. There is a time lapse between. Sorry. Uh, between. <laughs> no, the <it's>, <laughs> yeah, the internet. Um. Uh no, but my fifty five when I bought it was like brand new, never, wow. not one scratch, nothing. But now, of course, it's a lot different. And do, do, would you consider it's your favorite guitar? Because I, I, you guys have a lot of guitars there. And would you consider that one by saying like, it's not going anywhere forever? Would you consider that if you had to pick one since you started playing, it would be that one? Um, I have another one. It's a, I think I told you about it before. It's a 55 Telecaster. Mm. And yeah. But that one, that one is in the studio. I don't bring it on the road. And um, I would, if I had to choose one, I would pick the, the Telecaster. Oh, really? That's this is very- News. <laughs> yes, this, this one's very close. And then I have a, a Stratocaster from 55. I don't know if 55 is, was a good year for me, yeah, I think. Amazing but, year. Yeah, uh, Yeah, so the Tele, I would, if I had to keep one, it would be the Tele. Okay, well, yeah, you were you were telling me about uh, we were talking about the pickups and stuff. I think yeah, you I remember you uh, saying that the pickups were very uh, special in that guitar and uh, and the neck was also very special and that you you were trying to replicate it with the custom shop or stuff like that and uh, uh, and I I don't know if they successed or not so far, but uh, apparently it's a very special guitar. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, you, the internet again, but yeah, sure. um, the pickups in this guitar, uh, the pickups in this guitar, they sound like um, a Les Paul almost. Mm. Yeah. For some reason. I think very similar to, you know, when you listen to Zeppelin one that, you know, it's a Telecaster, but it's, it's beefy. Yeah. So it's very similar, but I had I had uh, Fender make a, a custom shop version of this guitar, mm -hmm. which is perfect in every way. But of course, you can't you can't make the sound of the pickups the same because they they were hand wound in 1955. They're old. They're, you know, you yeah. don't know why they sound the way they sound. Yeah, and they're aging. You know, and I I remember when I, I it was one of the most uh, you know biggest test guitar test of of my life when i brought you like the spot pickup in Oslo. i remember mm -hmm. like, we were there with thomas and uh, i remember we like you 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 know you just put them uh in in one of your ratio one or two of your ratios and uh i was i was just looking at you you know yes. carefully listening to the thing and I was like, maybe he's not going to like them. Maybe he's not going to like. And fi finally, you, I think you sounded amazing with that. Do you still have the, some some of those somewhere, or are they still in the guitars? Or yeah, they're, they're both in. I have them in my two Les Pauls for the tour, mm -hmm. but um, they're they're in storage because this we didn't tour this year, so. And how do you feel by not you know? touring finally? Are you what? Because we always see you with with Lenny always uh, on the road, you know. And I would say always on the run if I want to do a, uh, like a French joke. But uh, that that uh, yeah. we always see you on the road. But we are always wondering, as you guys are so busy, and even when you guys are in Paris, you you're always doing stuffs. Uh, what what are you guys doing? Well, in such a special year like that, finally, are you taking time to chill, to rest, to write some songs? What are you? Who, what is the the non touring Craig Ross doing when we are not when when you are not on the road? Well, in the beginning, uh, when we first started with the pandemic and the lockdown and everything canceled and. Um, we couldn't, we were on lockdown here for, I think, one month. Mm -hmm. We can't leave the house, you know, like a lot of the rest of the world. 
So for the first two months, I sat on this couch here and played guitar mm -hmm. every day, all day. And I haven't done that in a long time, you know, not since I was younger before I got busy doing other things. And so to me, it was a great time to just play again, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. learn things. And, maybe and then eventually we start to, to uh, yeah, maybe finding some material no, no, go ahead. To, to, to write some songs or to have some riff ideas that, that shows up maybe, or just playing and chilling. Yeah, exactly. Both. And the, the thing is, if you, if you play a lot, then, then all of a sudden the ideas start to come mm -hmm. and it's, It's cool because if we're always touring and then we run to the studio, sometimes you don't, your head is not ready yeah, easy. just to create. And so this has been very cool because I spent, I don't know, two months just playing and then we start to record a little bit and things are coming and it's been cool. And we've been recording for maybe, you know, a few months mm -hmm. and uh, it's, It's been great. The, the other thing is, you know, because we have a curfew here, you, you have to be home at five o'clock now. So is not a lot of time to record. So it feels like the old days when we used to rent a studio and you have to leave it, you know, if somebody's coming, time to go. You have to, yeah. so you, you, you work fast. And that's cool too. So, because I have to, come home because you know not to be uh, arrested or something you know yeah yeah that would be that's not the best idea for now you know being just arrested and being you know leaving the studio having some good vibes and you know finishing in jail and stuff so that would be like horrible thing you know? <laughs> and and but and you not so good that you 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 maybe had some new ideas that showed you know showed up with the with the lockdown and the curfew and all that you yeah. know, strange year And we rarely speak about the, the creativity sides of, uh, you know, your duo with, with uh, Lenny. It's, how do you guys finally compose? Are you bringing whole uh, in once, you know, the ideas on, on the table and just, uh, just saying to each other, I got this idea, you got to listen to this, and then you guys are just picking the best ideas? Or who, who is the writing process finally uh, with, with you guys? It's always uh, different, mm -hmm. um, you know, mostly, mostly Lenny will come bring something he has, or he, you know, he likes to dream his songs. You know, he'd come in and say, I dreamt this last night and we start to play it. Sometimes we just, uh, we'll just sit in the studio and say, let's just do something and then something happens like that and we have something or sometimes I will be at home. I'll make a, you know, I'll create like a, a track or something and we start with that, you know, okay. so it could be anything, but a lot of times, uh, a lot of times when we work together, it's uh, spontaneous in the studio. Yeah, even on stage, you know, the duo on stage is such a spontaneous thing. Even if the show uh, is super, like, super well uh, rehearsed and, you know, you guys are, are you know, are total master of, of the show. But uh, the, the creativity of the duo uh, and especially, you know, uh, with Gay Han and, and uh, um, you know, you guys also have a new drummer since one or two tours, I think. Uh, and the, the, the Yeah, band, yeah last year was an amazing band on stage. It's, it's probably one of the best live shows I've seen uh, the, from the past years of you guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was good. Yeah, that's the, the shame of this year because it was going very well and we were uh, excited to continue, you know, with that show and, uh, and now of course, who knows what happens next, but you know, we start something 
different, but it's yeah. Really cool. And we were planning. I really wanted to to drop you the spot, the fifty nine, the real fifty nine on stage. You know, last yeah. time, and we we couldn't do it uh, for you know for for some reason. So I was looking forward yeah. to bring you the ES three forty five and spot because uh, I think are you gonna go my way or, or you know believe or uh, songs like that would be would sound decent with that guitar and you. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I just can't wait for you. Yeah. Guys. Well, Bye. next time, I think. Yeah, I think last time was a problem because we were filming the show or something. I can't remember, so yeah, it's hard to do something new. And the the the, the new you know. arena in Paris uh, had some uh, electricity problems or conductivity with the. It was with the current. That's uh, right, and we could and we couldn't start until late. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, next time. Recording uh, the For show, sure. the radio, French radio, or stuff, something like that. But it was Paris is always busy that's with right. you guys. That's uh, I was remember I, I remember today all the souvenir we we had, and I remember the the day in Oslo, and after show we were like maybe six or seven of us, you know, in in the dressing room. Yes, in Paris, you have like four hundred guests, <laughs> which is which is like super intense for you all, and. Uh, yeah. Paris is always crazy, but but uh, yeah, I just I just can't. You know, we all miss live shows, and but uh, I I have I had really that feeling that yeah. the band, Lenny's band, and you guys are really um, there is magic on stage that's that's happening since the 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 current lineup is together. It's it's my opinion, but that's how I felt it. Oh, well, thank you. But we've no, we it was it was a great. That tour, that show, I really had a lot of fun with, you know, yeah. and we, yeah, we were having a really good time and, you know, but, you know, what do you yeah. do? 2020, thanks to, to COVID, you know, <laughs> but, and, and COVID, you know, man. So we were expecting maybe some new song that maybe will show up later, but uh, I, I have a feeling that some, some very good stuff, you know, there is always like, you know, some positive uh, stuff uh, even in the the worst times so i i have a feeling that you guys are going to surprise us once again <laughs> yeah i mean whatever i'm sure something positive will come out of this you know and especially with all this time off it's almost like a restart mm -hmm. so i'm sure it's going to be cool when whenever it's you know safe i guess for this stuff to happen again yeah, we, we we just hope soon, you know. But uh, and yeah. even for you guys, it, it it's uh, it's it's such a complicated thing because you guys are always playing in in big festivals, headlining, big venues and big shows. So, uh, but yeah. uh, but you know the the soon the sooner man, you know, would be the 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 best. Uh, the best option for all of us because I people really that I I, I had the feeling that in those weird times you always realize that heart music, you know, and heart in general is something that really reunites, reunites people together. And uh, that's right. why people are missing the, the, the you know, the, the much more it's art and uh, music is, is, um, is uh, you know, just a piece of it. And uh, that's when you miss it and you, that's, what, that's when you just can't have it that uh, you really, realize it's a big part of of your life finally yeah i mean the, there's nothing better than the the big show you know with the energy i mean even walk in the arena and all the people and the big energy and then the volume and the lights i mean i love a big show so yeah, that's been especially a shame, you know, that, you know the fifteen of minutes. Of course, that's impossible. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. you guys are just I mean, that's, freedom, and he's going somewhere, and we don't see him for like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, now he has to wear a space suit. I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, and uh, and. We will see in the future, but uh, and, and and I was wondering, um, and we were talking about like the electricity problems in Paris, whatever. But I was wondering with the the thousands of shows because I, I think we are talking with Lenny and the, the show. Even you were playing 
maybe sometimes uh, alone or, or whatever, but the thousands of shows you guys did, do you remember, uh, we always see the shows going perfect, but we never see and we never realize the anecdotes that are sometimes happening. Do you remember like two or three super like funny moments on tour or on stage, uh, you know, with, with, with like such um, just weird situation or funny situation that happened on stage and that you had to, to manage if you had to pick some of them? Um, we, were, we, we, we were playing in um, Verona in Italy mm -hmm. in sometime in the 2000s. And Lenny used to wear, uh, you know, fringe? Yeah, sure. What fringe is? Like, okay, he had a big fringe shirt, jacket. The fringe was, you know, long, long, lots of fringe have a 70s SG and it has the the tuning pegs you know that go like that I don't know oh, what they yeah. call the on a Gibson yeah I'm playing a solo and Lenny comes and he's doing this and I'm doing this and be and very soon I realize my guitar is in his shirt now oh it's like you know the yeah <laughs> and i could on, i could i could only do one thing but take the guitar off and say that's it what can i do you know I'm, it's hanging on lenny like you know okay yeah um i think one time my amplifier just yeah. blew up stopped, blew up, stopped yeah. to work wow but i and I've, I've i've seen that on youtube but apparently somebody has that on youtube but i mean it's not funny it's like what are you gonna do it stops you yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember, by the way, in the, at, in the Paris show, when you guys recorded the DVD, I think it was like five mm -hmm. years ago. And uh, I think you were doing the, the solo of Are You Gonna Go My Way with your Black Beauty. And uh, I think... That's right, it yeah, cut out. It cut out. And uh, so, so I think you guys had to, to put the solo again in the studio or whatever. But uh, yeah. I remember yeah. that. And I was suddenly I hear like... <laughs> you know and uh, but it's the magic of vintage guitars on stage yeah exactly and who knows and the old amplifiers you know things are always happening like something stops but you know you switch quick and yeah. you know yeah and you know sometimes even the crowd don't even notice because you guys are playing such a navy energetic show that people, it's, it's about the mood of the show, finally. So sometimes the, I'm sure the pro Absolutely. won't notice, won't even notice what's happening. And it doesn't matter. It's real life. It's, it's happening. You know, things happen and that's, nothing's perfect. And that's, you know, yeah, of course, that's yeah. okay. That's the magic of yeah. the show as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I, I once, I was watching the Stones once in a, arena somewhere and uh, they were playing satisfaction mm -hmm. and the whole back line stopped the guitars the bass but you know the pa was still on so you could hear the drums and and Mick Jagger. okay and and for 20 seconds you you think something's different but you don't even know what it is yet it, mm. you, you know you don't even realize you can't hear the you can't hear the guitars you know yeah, of course. So, yeah. And you, especially with the stones, the number of times that Keith started start me up, I've done up, you know, uh, and then the band was like, okay, whatever, you know, we, we just, just continue the song. <laughs> exactly. But that's the magic, you know, even with some guitar player like Jimmy Page and all those guys, you're expecting what's the, you know, the wrong note in the solo that's going yeah. to, it's part of the vibe of those players finally. Of course, but well, sometimes in the studio, you you when you're recording, you play something you, you didn't mean to play, mm -hmm. yeah. like a mistake. But that turns out to be the coolest part of the song, or the coolest part of the solo, or whatever. It's yeah. it's when you have to know, you have to be open to say, oh, that happened. That's cool. 
Yeah, I, I remember when we were talking about T-Bone Walker when you were at the shop last time. Yeah. And, uh, and I think on the, on the Stormy Monday version of um, Bobby Blue Blend, uh, which was like mm -hmm. amazing, I, I just an amazing singer. And I think if you listen carefully, and Billy Gibbons told me this once, uh, and the bass and the guitar are not doing the same, um, you know, chord change. progression and change. And that's what makes, at some point, the song magical, because it still sounds That's amazing. right. Yeah, and sometimes it's just what it is, or many Bob Dylan records, you can hear the band go here, he goes here, but it's still cool, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, and, and do you, did yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Did you uh, discover some new record this year? A, a lot of people are talking about, about the, the new ACDC record that saves a bit 2020, you know, the end of 2020. <laughs> But uh, did you did yeah. you discovering some new artists or new guitar players that you you could you know could enjoy and in, uh, in the new generation of guitar player? Or are you mostly listening to classics? I'm back now. I'm I've been listening to you know Charlie Christian and yeah uh, yeah the master Grant Green even yeah I'm I'm going. I think further back, yeah. you know, I don't, um, I haven't heard that many new things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe you can even tell me who's cool now. I, I you know, I just, I just have few favorites. But, uh, you know, you know I like you, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I just discovered the last ACDC record, uh, you know, the past week and I, it was mind blowing. Yeah, I know that just came out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's mind blowing. And, and, you know, Phil, Phil Rudd is back on the, on the drums and Brian but Johnson. But you, know, but you know, but you know, I, I, I listened to one song uh, the other day and the record sounds great. And I, I heard the main, the, the song, the one they put out. Yeah. Shot in the dark. I, I noticed one thing, the tuning of the guitars is not the same as it used to be when right. Malcolm played. Yeah. Now, Because before ACDC was, how do those guitars sound so in tune together? Mm -hmm. Like magic, you know? And I noticed the other day, I was like, doesn't sound the same to me. Like, it sounds more, almost more normal. Like ACDC with the two brothers, the tuning was like. Yeah. But they one, they were one of the best duo of all time in guitar. Duo yeah, of course. Of all time, you know, they they were so. It's like I I, I noticed one day uh, Keith Richards saying, uh, I think it's in a, the Scorsese uh, movie uh, when they played in New York, and and he said, you know, Ronnie and I, we are just like barely even. You know, we are like one on 10 guitar players, but together on stage, we're unbeatable. And that, I think that was yeah, the exactly. Thing. With the with some duo, and I, I, in my opinion, you and Lenny on stage are, are one of those duos that you know. I think most of the guitar players would wouldn't imagine even separating. You know, we we can't see mm. another player with them on stage, and I think yeah, the Young Brothers had such. And for me, in my humble opinion, ACDC was Malcolm's band. You know, and they, that's what they're saying. Of course. Uh, in interview yeah. and stuff. So um, I think the nephew is, is uh, Stevie is doing the best, but I think Malcolm is such, you know, it's one of the best right ends that, uh, you know, we, we knew uh, in, in the rock and roll history. Yeah. I mean, they, there's two guys playing uh, open G chord is right. Or yeah. loud, but it's perfect. Two yeah. guys. It's amazing. You know? Yeah. Anyway. It, It's like when you when you hear the first when you go to see the Stones for the first time and you just you're not expecting Keith Richards doing like a crazy guitar solo in sympathy for Devil but you you're just waiting for the notes he's going to do with that 57 Les Paul Jr in the in the Fender amp and stuff and that's it yeah you know? but uh, yeah and it and that guitar does sound amazing in sympathy for the devil now and when they turn him up Ring, yeah, incredible. Yeah. For me, the best sound is having for years is the Les Paul Junior through the tree, the Fender Twin Hemp, and uh, that's 
one of my yeah. favorite life, life song for like since you know you have much more of course much more uh, thousands of shows um, much more experience uh, than me but I, I had the chance to see the stones like thir- three times and every time he's playing that special guitar for that special song something magical happens uh, you know with with the song oh, i agree yeah totally yeah so so what what's your your uh, Home playing guitar. What? What? Which guitar are you? Were you playing on, on at home since? Uh... At home, well, I have this Martin that I play a lot. It's the D twenty eight. I think you've played this before because I, I have this on tour. You know, on stage, yeah. Really amazing, but I only ever play it on tour. So now it's great to have it at home. You know, and I. Got this from Gibson last time I was in Nashville. Oh, it's uh, well, they call it a 355. Okay. And it's it's great. And I've been playing this guitar. Okay. That's it. I just sit here. And, yeah. and I saw you were repairing a 345 or 355 recently on your Instagram. I was watching it, and I was I saw the the the, the picture yeah. that nobody wants to see as a guitar player. <laughs> what what happened? It was. That? It's it's a. It's my new favorite guitar, by the way. So we were talking about, we were talking about the Telecaster, perhaps, you know, I don't know this one for very long because I got this at the same time when we were in Nashville from Carter. And uh, it's uh, 62, 345. Wow. And the pickups came wired like uh, the Peter Green thing. Oh, nice. They, it just came that way. Anyways, it's magical because, you know, I played in the shop. You know, it looks like it's been through a, a, a war or a flood, which maybe it was through the flood in Nashville before. Yeah, few years back, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it looks, it, you know, looks like it's been places and it sounds magical. Anyways, so... We were on lockdown and I brought it here. I, I have it. I had it at home. But, you know, I was working, making tracks or whatever, and I leaned it against the, the wall. You oh, know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. You know what happened next. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But because, you know, the has the, um, the very tone. So the, the guitar is not balanced. It's heavy oh, on one side. Course. Like an SG almost, yeah. Yeah, and the neck, the headstock, complete, came off completely. It was, yeah. Mm. So is Alex fixing it? Alex fixed it the best he could. He did a very, I can play the guitar now, it's fine. Okay. But it wasn't, wasn't the first time when I bought the guitar, it had already been repaired. Once. Okay, gotcha. So I think it came off. They didn't. Re- they didn't glue it very well the first time. Maybe because it came off the same, same place. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That. So that's probably like. Uh, yeah. It was. It was not supposed to to fall initially, but uh, at least at least now it's strong because Alex is always doing like uh, uh, for people who, who don't know uh, and who are going to watch the video. But yeah, Alex, he's a the backup guy of you and Lenny and. Uh, is managing yes. so many stuff for you for you too so uh, um, yeah so, yeah that's the is the saver of the guitar finally <laughs> that's right so he fixed it and um, it's not the first time he's put uh, re put a headstock on one of my yeah. guitars yeah I, I'm or Lenny I'm, or Lenny's <laughs> yeah <laughs> and 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 you were you were telling me do you have some some magical guitars that you always use in the studio it's like uh, you just pick. Like okay, I got this vibe on it. I'm going to try a Tilly or whatever. I think we were we were talking a lot about like a 58 gold top that Lenny has. Lenny has. Lenny has one that he he um, he got maybe right before we started the Argument Go My Way record. Mm-hmm. So that was the first real I think 50s Les Paul we had in the studio and. Um, that guitar is magic. Every time you play it, it records Straight amazingly. Mm-hmm. And for example, I used it on the song, Are You, Are you Gonna Go My Way? And, but we've used it on 
I don't know how many tracks, you know, since then. It pr probably gets used the most. Because mm -hmm. it's, for some reason, it's magical. He has other uh, Les Pauls. I have other guitars there, but this one is always, you know, yeah. it's just like, has that vibe. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you totally, and, and and you feel attached to the guitar as well. I, I remember when you guys were talking about that guitar, that that was some yeah. even even something emotional that you were uh, talking about uh, about this guitar in particular. But uh, yeah, and so usually if you just say you know uh, I want to play whatever a Gibson, you just pick this one up. Yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and yourself, do you have like? When because a lot of people were like super in Paris, uh, we we talked about a lot about the the video you did with with Lenny because Lenny was playing all the instruments for for Believe like the lockdown Believe version. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And he was playing alone all uh, along the during the clip, you know. So I was like, where is Craig? Or whatever you know. But it's lockdown, so it was logical that you guys might be you know not next to each other, and we yeah. were super pleased to. To see you playing at the end, like because we—that's one of, in my opinion, one of the best solos you ever did. You know, uh, on, oh, on thank you. that song. But do you con what? Are, what is your the the between uh, uh, all the solos you you composed uh, magically, and that's why a lot of people were super excited on Instagram to discover we are doing this today. If you had to pick one or two solos yeah. that you wrote. Uh, in the studio and recorded like did you do you do you have like one or two favorite solos if you had to pick some well I do like Believe because I more people tell me about that solo than anything else so I guess Believe is special because you know a, a lot of people tell me that they you know they really like that solo or back in you know in the 90s or whatever that, that that's the one you know and it's always fun to play live so yeah of course and, yeah and live are you are you improvising that that one a bit or are you just playing not not by anymore not anymore in the beginning i did but now uh i think it makes sense to play the solo mm -hmm. for ex for example if i don't know like If Jimmy Page played Stairway to Heaven note for note in front of me, I would be super. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's the solo. You know, you can improvise, but some things, if people already know the melody, play the melody. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, and and the the solo is so perfect. So uh, that. Oh, thank you. That's uh, you know, it's we we tried uh, with friends to to play it note by note for years, but uh, we still didn't success. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, th that's that's so that's thank you. The one that you would pick uh, if you had to choose one finally. Yeah, that one I like. I yeah, that one that one for sure. I can't get you off my mind. I liked um, because of course, are you gonna go my way? Is a masterpiece as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, and that you know that happened. Um, once you know happened during the recording of the overdub and there was a um, big space and it was same like somebody was waiting to come in the studio we had to leave mm -hmm. and uh i was i said you know let me play one more track the other side you know the high guitar and they were taking the cables and wrapping them up and putting away microphones. And I was playing that thing and this solo part came. So I just played that. I just, I'll, I'll play something would be like a solo. So everybody knows, you know? Yeah. And then they said, no, that was good. So that's, that's the solo. One take. Yeah. One take. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one take for that one. That's, that's the, <laughs> that's something special. <laughs> And yeah, so, it was pretty. And you were, it was pretty you cool. You that with the with yeah. the, the gold top, right? That solo, that precise one. That that one, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So so at That's least the first time I think we realized that, that gold top was cool. Say what? 
that's, Sorry? So at least, at least people can imagine all that guitar we were talking about earlier sounds like, you know. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, I'm, I mean, Craig, I, I just can't wait, you know, to, we were speaking of camera, uh, uh, you know, before the, 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 the thing, but I just can't wait to see you guys again. You know, we miss you. And, um, and as I Thank told you. you in the, in the beginning of, of uh, the video, uh, it's, we have a, a special connection with you and we feel a special connection with you because you were one of the, the first guys that, you know, accepted to meet us when we started. And it was one of the first big guitars we bought back then. And you were the, the, the first one as well, our artist talking to come in, in the shop as well. So you, we were, we feel oh, something yeah. super, uh, super special with you. And I can't thank you enough to, thank you. to share the connection of uh, Bahamas internet and uh, sharing a bit of your time with us today. Yeah. <laughs> of course, man, anytime, like I said before. Yeah, it's a uh, you know yeah. I think I I I just say thank you. I don't even re I was uh, wondering and I I don't even recall you doing a Zoom uh, guitar geek uh, talk before before today. I don't even recall you doing that. I did I did one once before uh, with it's called Everyone Loves Guitar. I think okay. right. It's, uh, it's this guy in the United States. So I I actually did one. Before. Well, you know, I, I'm happy to have been this one's the fun again, one. but uh, but uh, you know, I, I just you know, we I just wanted to say one more <laughs> time, we, we all miss you. Say hi to to the family, uh, and uh, we we all miss you, and I can't wait to to I will. Thank again you. without uh, you know without the virus thing. Of course, well, maybe next year or the year after, but soon. Yeah, I can't wait an, a, anyway. So thank you, For buddy. Sure. We, we all miss you and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, man. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, cool.